What's up everyone, welcome to another video. Thank God the barbers are opening on Monday because I've got a forbidden forest here and I need a hedge trimmer. Welcome to another video. Today we're talking about IIFYM. What is it? It's if it fits your macros and how can we utilize this to get some fat loss or muscle gain results? Let's get into the video. So IIFYM has been a popular trend over the last few years. It stands for if it fits your macros and it essentially means that there's a more flexible way of, of going about your diet. So once you have worked out your maintenance calories and you, you've then picked an appropriate deficit or surplus or maintenance calories depending on your goals, whether you're cutting, maintaining or bulking, you then work out your macronutrient goals, so your protein, fat and carbs. Now, once you have your, your macronutrient goals, the theory with if it fits your macros is you can make up these macros with any foods that you desire, so nothing is off limits. For example, if your macros consist of 300 grams of carbs that you need to eat in one day, it doesn't really matter in theory what forms of carbohydrates you get in your diet. Now, this could be made up of foods, good foods, more, more nutritious foods, as, as we say, for sweet potato, rice, whole grain pasta, things like this. They can be more nutrient dense, more, more full of micronutrients, the vitamins and minerals that your body needs. However, the, the, the if it fits your macros approach suggests that nothing is off limits. So you could then also substitute in carbs such as pizza, more uh, less nutrient dense food essentially. So more processed carbs pizza, pasta, things like this that have in theory less nutrients in. So you can f use a balance between the two in order to make up your total carbohydrate intake. Now we'll go through some pros and cons in a minute of this, but my initial thoughts on this is that it's, it's a good way to approach food because if you don't restrict any foods completely, then you're going to, you're not going to look at foods that are, are good or bad. And by not labeling foods as good or bad, you, you're gonna be in a less restrictive mindset and you're not gonna punish yourself for when you do go out for dinner or you do indulge slightly one weekend. So I think one big, big advantage of this approach to eating is it's just a healthy mindset to have. Life's too short to be tracking sugars as a subset of carbohydrates, right? You should be looking at your overall macronutrient intake, your protein, carbs and fat, as long as you are hitting those numbers on a consistent basis, sticking to a calorie target, and you are getting a healthy and balanced diet, so plenty of fruit and veg, and you, your sleep's on point, your training is going well, all of these things, as long as you're, just keep it simple, as long as as long as long all these factors are not being thrown out massively, then it's fine, it's fine to have the odd pizza, the odd processed food, as long as it doesn't make up the majority of a, a diet, it's absolutely fine. And a lot of the time we talk about this 80 to 20% rule. If your 80% of your diet is whole foods and 20% of your diet is processed foods, then that's it's not the end of the world, is it? Life's too short for this. So I really do think it's a healthy way to approach eating. You don't want to be that person that goes out for dinner with friends and family and you're worried, worried about enjoying a pizza or enjoying a food that you really enjoy because there's no nutritional info at the restaurant or something like that, right? It's good to track if you can, but just overestimate. If you if you know you're going out for dinner on a Friday, a Friday night, and you're gonna have a couple of drinks, just reduce the calories slightly earlier in the day. Maybe up your protein intake during the day slightly to keep you fuller for longer because of its high, high satiety effect. So it's gonna keep you fuller for longer. So up your protein intake during the rest of the day, especially if you don't know that you're gonna get you don't know the protein intake of the food that you're going to eat out. Maybe give yourself a bit of a buffer and just reduce reduce the calories earlier in the day slightly, and that way you can you've got a, you give yourself a bit of a buffer so that even if you go you do indulge a bit at the meal out, then you're not going to go way way over your calories. So having the odd meal out and not tracking everything is not is not the end of the world. You just need to be smart about your choices. So bear that in mind it's a it's a healthy way to approach eating 
using it if it fits your macros and flexible dieting and I really don't think it's sustainable to eat clean and really really nutrient dense food for every single meal I don't think that that's many people can stick to that consistently over a long period of time and ultimately something that you're going to be able to stick to over a longer period of time is going to get you better results isn't it so long-term adherence is key and by do by keeping long-term adherence high it's going to likely coincide with a diet that you enjoy so making sure that you're eating foods that you enjoy other positives of if it fits your macros is it's just really easy and, and flexible and really easy to implement if you know that you've just got certain targets to hit then it's going to be it's going to be very easy to just utilize any foods to get to those numbers and i think you should be picking a balance between carbs and fat that you enjoy most people try and search for optimal diets is there people can often ask is there an optimal ratio an optimal percentage macros should you be doing 30 percent protein 40 percent carbs 30 percent fat or should your fats be slightly lower or higher this should come down to personal preference it's gonna be different for every person everyone has different preferences on food types and just because someone else has really good results doing a higher carb lower fat approach to their to their diet then it's not necessarily going to work for you so individual and personal preference should really come into that so there's no optimal diet as such another benefit of using if it fits your macros is that it's going to give you a better understanding of what is in different types of foods and, and you'll have a, a good understanding after tracking for a while of what con of what the macronutrient profile is of foods and you'll be able to then later down the line after tracking for a number of a period of weeks or months you're going to be able to eyeball food for example i can i can after a number of years tracking i can now look at a plate of food and probably roughly estimate the calories in it and the, and the rough protein intake once you've scanned a few items into my fitness palette it's going to become a bit more clear on on which foods are, uh, which foods are more calorie dense because they're higher in fats and which which foods have more protein and carbs in so another benefit of if it fits your macros is it's going to give you a better understanding after tracking for a number of weeks and months of what are in different types of foods you could have a chocolate bar with the same number of calories as sweet potato for example a portion of sweet potato could be the same number of calories as a chocolate bar but they're going to have a very very different macronutrient profile sweet potato in theory is going to be much better much better carbs than the sugars in a in a chocolate bar but this ultimately ultimately still going to both provide you with a certain number of carbs right so once you've once you've once you've used this flexible dieting and you've tracked your intake on MyFitnessPal for a period of time, it's going to give you a good understanding of the different macronutrient profiles of foods, which can only benefit you in the long run in not having to as strictly track years down the line and being able to being able to estimate your calorie your calories and your macronutrient intake when you're eating out. So, what are the negatives associated with if it fits your macros and the flexible dieting approach? Well because it puts so much emphasis on macronutrients a lot of the time it can overlook the micronutrients so it, the diet says that everything is for, everything is fair game but that can often lead to people just justifying eating rubbish and claiming if it fits your macros if you end up if you end up eating a lot of processed foods and less nutrient dense food carbs and a lot of fats uh, unhealthy fats then so things high in saturated fat for example then you know it's not going to be good for you long term and could lead to long-term health implications as well so it's really important that you do still focus on getting enough micronutrients in your diet so plenty of fruit and veg at least five portions of fruit and veg a day the the diet in itself doesn't put any emphasis on micronutrients so it's quite easy for people to get carried away with it and go off the rails so be careful about not ignoring your micronutrients another issue about doing a diet like this where there's there's no restrictions on food is it's not going to be suitable for everyone especially if you've got underlying health conditions so someone that's diabetic for example has to be very careful on their carb intake and the types of carbs that they are taking in specifically as such and then for people with underlying like kidney disease then you have to be quite careful on your protein intake and it may not be appropriate to to do this, such a flexible approach to dieting so anyone anyone with underlying health conditions i would urge you to cons consult a doctor before 
doing any form of say flexible dieting so be careful with that obviously and you could you could argue to be honest that it's it's just a, a it's just a fancy way of saying that you can eat whatever you want right so it shouldn't really be perceived as like a diet as such you're not following it oh i'm on it i'm on it if it fits your macros diet you're not you just you're just using a sustainable long-term way of eating so your nutrition i like to use the word nutrition and view your food intake and your food and drink intake as a long-term sustainable way of eating rather than any fast fad diets or restrict or diets as such it's probably going to come with negative connotations by using the word diet so i think think of, think of it as more of a healthy and balanced approach to nutrition so all that being said, I really do think that flexible dieting is the way to go. It's going to give you the, in my opinion, it's going to give you the most long-term success because you're going to be enjoying the foods you're eating, you're eating and you're going to feel like nothing's off limits. So completely restricting certain food types from your diet is maybe going to give you short-term results, but not set up a long-term sustainable way of eating that you enjoy and that is healthy long-term. It's going to give you a better and healthier mindset towards foods by not labeling foods as good and bad and i really do think it's something that you can utilize to good effect overall i really hope you enjoyed today's video and you took something from it if you did give it a like leave a comment thoughts on the video and what you'd like to see next at subscribe for more content and i'll catch you guys on the next one see you later bye